you know, I started to write this and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And I actually sat on it for a while. Um, some people might call it the word procrastination. I'm not going to call it procrastination per se. I'm going to call it pausing. Um, purposeful, positive pausing. Because we don't always know exactly what the next steps are. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of Pen to Paper Press Podcast. My name is Cindy, and I'm your host. Best-selling authors, writers, editors, and publishers join me in my virtual studio for conversations about the process of developing our stories to completing our works of art. Each episode is an opportunity for us to explore insights, pearls of wisdom, and the experiences we've had on our journey from putting that pen to paper and accomplishing our goals. Enjoy today's conversation. Natasha Cassidy is the author of Awakening the Feminine Goddess, Flashlights in the Sky, Miss Lacey's Anxious Adventures When Anxieties Get Too Big. Natasha is an educator who helps parents better understand their children and teens' mental health, emotional and behavioral health. And in addition, she shared her spiritual and relationship insights as a contributor writer for Elements for a Healthier Life magazine in all 15 issues. And... In addition to all of that, she was featured on the cover of the March 2017 edition. I am beyond thrilled to have you in my virtual studio, Natasha. I'm good. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, Cindy. It's it's always great to connect with you and see what incredible journey that we're going to discover along the way. Um, We definitely have fun that is one thing that's that's always awesome um to be with you and i ask um all of the podcast individuals to you know come along this quirky journey and the reason i say quirky journey is that i do as Cindy mentioned work with um youth and families that are all not always understood by societal norms and I always tell them throw that nonsense away and be the best you that you can possibly be whatever word you use I prefer quirky sometimes they will say weirdo but in the end they're just an amazing spectacular individual and so I hope and bless you with that as well well thank you Thank you. You have this very natural gift of being able to communicate through speaking, through your art, through your books, to people at the level that they're at. You have this natural gift, which, you know, not a lot of people have. (laughs) Um, And I want to congratulate you on publishing the children's books. What inspired you to write children's books? Well, thank you. This has been an interesting journey. So my most favorite um, books as a child was just any book, but I really liked children's books. I liked the adventures that I could go on. And then as a parent, I really loved, enjoyed, you know, reading books with my children. They were very much bookies as much as I, I am. We're total book geeks, nerds, whatever you want to say. And we're proud of it. Uh, we would go to the, the library every single Friday, and the librarians would always say, so this is your limit for this week. Um, <laughs> you're going to exceed it. So which books are the most important? And then there was this natural progression of, I started to, to write the Awake, uh, Waking the Feminine Goddess back in 2014. It's really interesting that we're coming to an end of a seven-year cycle. Uh, and with you um, as well, Cindy, it's like, wow, you know, we started this cycle about that time frame, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we basically, you know, I started to write this and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And I actually sat on it for a while. Um, some people might call it the word procrastination. I'm not going to call it procrastination per se. I'm going to call it pausing. Um, purposeful, positive 
pausing because we don't always know exactly what the next steps are. And we always sometimes, and I, I am, I, I have a bit of a type A personality. Shh, I know, it, it, you know, it, it happens. <laughs> but I also have a very, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confusing in that. I have the type A personality, and then I have the very patient personality. I'm not sure how they work together, but they do. Um, and so I wrote this book, and I sat, and I wasn't exactly sure what to do with it. And then something said, jump, and I said, okay. Uh, and I dove into creating this uh, Awakening the Feminine Goddess, uh, Understanding Your Archetypes, and I published it back in 2015 and as a self, you know, self-published you know, self author, as an indie author, and it has been my bestseller. Uh, loved the book. And then I was going through a lot of different um, situations where I would write as a contributor for magazines, I would uh, be an author contributor from a very spiritual nuance, and yet there always seemed to be this inner child that would come out and want to be part of this journey, and so I would have to say it's like my inner child, you know, got into this really happy space, I like to call it happy cartwheels or soul giggles, and the flashlights, uh, flashlight, flashlights in the sky was birthed. Uh, all of the illustrations in, in the book are my paintings. I painted them. Uh, and it has been definitely an interesting moment because it's, it's, it's been kind of one of those like, well, it wasn't a flop, but it wasn't an over success either. And then uh, I started to write Miss Lacey's Anxious Adventure after Lacey and I, she's a real uh, character, she's a real dog. Everybody who meets her says, well, she's quite the character. <laughs> oh, yes, she is. <laughs> she's not here in this room trying to go, excuse me, this is my interview. Um, but she, she really is a character, and she, as a wee little puppy, we went in this, this walk in her forest neighborhood, because we live in the middle of this beautiful forest, and she met some of the most incredible uh, animals along the way, and her anxiety naturally is very high. She is a, a lab hound, but she has more hound than lab. And that anxiety that the coon hounds can have are, is very extreme, very high, and I went, oh! You know, let's put two and two together. Children's books. Oh, my goodness. What the most amazing, blessed gift to be provided by the universe. A way to work with young individuals. Um, and But it doesn't have to be just young individuals. You can still use these books, parents reading them to their, their children, maybe parents having aha moments. And I'm really in that space of, you know, this really needs to be about the youth and, it, and, it, and it helping the families and helping youth to understand their mental, emotional, and behavioral health. Society is not kind. They really are not to those that are not neurotypical. Their uh, society can be very unkind to people who do not seem to fit into a box or category. And mental concerns emotional concerns and behavioral concerns are definitely like can we put this over here no you cannot they're individuals they deserve everything like everyone else and please do not do that to this beautiful wonderful individuals who are learning how to be themselves mm -hmm. in a society that isn't always authentic yeah and so the birth of children's books are here they're here to stay um but it's, it's always interesting how it ebb and flows with how things go and um a lot of people don't know this but uh, the waking in the feminine goddess i started to change the children's books have the old author's name and i say old well i my husband and I finally got married. <laughs> We've been together 10 and a half years, and we finally did it. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to stay with the former writing name of Natasha Botkin. That's not who I am. It bridged me to where I am now, yay. Mm -hmm. But I want to change, these, change the name 
And so I also want to put all of my educational um, attributes on there as well. Because something went, why aren't you celebrating all of this expertise that you have? Mm -hmm. I don't know that answer. I better celebrate that. Yes, yes, let's celebrate it. Um, So I I reached out to the person who um, helped me adjust some of the Awakening Feminine Goddess uh, original cover. And they're like, sure, I'll do it. And I was excited, like, oh, thank you. Because, I mean, we're talking, this was 2015, 16. I didn't even know if they maybe were even still, you know, creating uh, book covers and so forth. And they they are. Good. And then they fixed the, the book cover to have my, my, you know, the name and all the edu- educational uh, credentials. And then 24 hours later, they gifted me with just an astounding, beautiful gift. I, I mean, I sat there in awe, just staring at my phone. My husband is like, are you okay? You know, kind of like, are you okay? Tapping me on the shoulder. And I just turned and I said, look. And I can't wait until it's ready. But the Awakening Feminine Goddess inside just no longer ma- matches the outside. Really? That particular book uh, cover creator gifted me and a revised uh, book cover and I'm just astounded that they did this but I'm also excited because oh well okay I can do this this is my book I can revise this Mm -hmm. now I understand why I was you know some people might use the term procrastinate I'm not going to use that term I want to turn from kind of a dark space into a positive space and that is you know, purposely pausing because I didn't know what was coming next. We never do. We'd like to think we know what's coming next and we'd like to make what's coming next happen, but it doesn't always work out that way. And <laughs> you have been one to remind me of that a lot <laughs> over the years <laughs> to just let it happen cindy i think those are the words you've said to me many many times just let it happen <laughs> <laughs> it's always easier to say it you know out loud to someone else and yet you know here i am with this um you know, purposeful pause of, un, you know, uncertainty. And I, I did start to almost, it was like this fever just ignited. And I'm like, oh, I need to type. I started typing and, oh, this is just making sense. And I love it. And it's doing awesome. And then February happened and I've had to take a purposeful pause. February is a very difficult month for me. Uh, last year, um, at the beginning of February, no one ever wants that phone call. Uh, my dad was rushed, you know, having a heart attack and was going to the uh, the heart center ICU and went to visit him. And, and it's like, oh, daddy, no, daddy. And knew in that moment that that kiss on the forehead was the last kiss that I would ever provide to my dad. And... Um, so he passed away just a couple of weeks prior to his birthday. Oh. So I, I didn't realize until February went through that, you know, there's a reason I'm not procrastinating. I kept telling myself, you're procrastinating, knock it off, get over it. And then one day something just exploded within me and the tears poured out and it went, oh, yeah, this is because I miss my daddy and there's yeah. no reason to force it no um and so taking that pur- purposeful pause uh and i'm i'm feeling like okay we're, we're we're into march i'm not sure when i'll start writing again um but when it's time it'll it'll be time and uh, sometimes we don't want to wait for the universe necessarily and sometimes we just kind of need to wait for the universe it's it's one of those I'm just going to say it is. It's a mind game. It's, you know, are you going to move yourself out of your way? And which part of your mind do you want to use? Do you want to use your prefrontal cortex, which is part of your wise mind or your rational thought process? 
or you want to use your limbic system, which is the ruler of your emotions, and that brings forth your irrational thought processes. And it's almost like, you know, when you have that moment where it just seems like the emotions are super dark or super strong, and it, they're just running amok, they're, they're ruling your life, mm-hmm. you can stop and say, hey, limbic system, stop being so irrational. Not necessarily that it's going to listen. <laughs> It's the acknowledgement, um, and it's you know, and it's it's about being okay and being okay to be in that space, to be in that that um, it, this too shall pass. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's 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 always an interesting road, definitely. It is, and I, you know, I congratulate you on the children's book. It was it most certainly was not the direction that I had seen you go. Uh, you know, I didn't anticipate that, but now that you're there and I'm, and I'm witnessing this, it's like, of course, Natasha would be going in the children's book direction. And so truly, I mean, to, to take that, that shift and change is, is definitely creatively freeing for you, especially since you're doing the artwork on it. You are this creative soul that has so much to express and the fact that you're doing it and you're not holding it back I mean I'm sure you're holding a little bit back um (laughs) as we all do but still you're allowing the flow to happen you're just putting it out there and and that's awesome you never do you don't follow the cookie cutter mold you don't and, you know, so that is something to truly celebrate because the fact that how you do things is truly your way. And it is an inspiration for those that don't feel like they fit in somewhere that, hey, look, this this gal has has done all of this, you know, accomplishments. And look at her. She's not following the pack she's not following what the gurus are are saying you got to do it you know a b c d you're like oh let's go m let's maybe hit a z let's maybe hit the b you know you don't follow you don't follow the rules and you know and you're okay with that I wanted to ask you, because you are very spiritually gifted, you have many, many gifts in that regard, and when you go to sit down and write, or maybe I should word it as for the audience, you know, what would your pearl of wisdom be so that they understand, you know, what the difference is between receiving that intuitive uh, message versus like the ego. So, you know, how do you, how do you discern between ego and intuition when you sit down to write? I love that you use the word ego because you know that once upon a time I did, I pulled it off of, um, again, another one that I need to revise, but it, it, I was told not to have that book, but create an e-course. Oh boy, I got a lot of things to do in life. Um, I always tease my husband and say, we need to win the lotto so I can do all of these ideas. And then I just get the, the blank and the, and the stare and she's serious. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. Um, but you know, it's, it's, I love that you asked this question because I did say, as you were asking it, I went, Oh, the outline. I said outline. Okay. So my outline as a teacher I teach students how to outline things because with bullet points and and different uh, levels of headings and so forth, because the students that I work with are in need of that kind of assistance or that kind of guidance. Me, myself, no, no, I'm 100% an intuitive writer. I, I know that I probably would, you know, drive an editor or publisher bonkers maybe that's why the the universe steers me away from them Uh, but basically I sit down and I just type and you know and I might have a quote already that I I know about oh I really like that quote that's where that quote belongs boom there it goes or oh you know this is why I wrote this down like I have you oh you should see my notes in my phone 
it, uh, I have all these notes in my phone and I have to sit there and go through. That's what it was. And it's not even like I have to hunt and peck for it. I'll just go, oh, there it is. And then I just, you know, uh, pop that information kind of in. But what discernment is between spiritual and ego is first thing that from, you know, I am a behavior specialist um, as you know, one of the many titles, I guess we want to call it, or hats, um, celebrations, let's call it a celebration. <laughs> uh, I'm, very pr- <laughs> I'm very proud of it. I need to, to be much more loud about it. Um, not like from a volatile vanity, narcissistic stay up status, but more from a, you have worked your tail end off, girl. Why are you not showcasing this talent? Uh, and so... The ego is usually typically what is going to speak first. I know most people are are going to be like, what? No, that's not what a lot of the gurus say. But yes, uh, if we want to be really real and raw with ourselves, that snarky, snarky, you can't do it, depressive, angry attitude of you suck is your ego it has been taught to keep you safe. It is the first thing that you are going to hear. Then if you can get past that shadow moment, because it ultimately is a shadow moment, it's a dark moment. When you can get past that shadow moment and that dark moment, it's like there's light at the end of the tunnel. And that's when your intuition can come to you to work with you if, you're, if you will allow that spiritual nuance to come forth. Um, I use the term get out of your way a lot to my own personal self. Uh, Girl, why are you standing in the middle of the road again? Get out of the way and allow it to come to you Mm -hmm. um, rather than force it. Prime example is it's totally off topic from writing, but I just, we had an SUV and I was, it, it was a smaller SUV. And once upon a time, I had a large SUV, loved it, loved it, a Suburban. Loved that vehicle. It could drive itself. Due to circumstances, I went from a Suburban to a Soul, a Kia Soul. Ha ha, funny, you know, <laughs> the IRA behind it. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I hated that. Oh, if you've ever seen how high up a Suburban is and how low to the ground a Soul is, it is a huge difference. And mm-hmm. I battled that the whole time. Uh, oh, okay. One day I'll be back in a, a larger vehicle. One day. That day just happened, oh, what, a couple weeks ago, about three weeks ago. I just got this, you know what? We need a truck. And my husband looked at me and, you know, like, oh, there she goes. Still leave her alone. <laughs> um, and I love that, that he does that. He's, he's figured that out of. She's piping up. We need a truck. I don't know how fast this is coming, but I better get out of her way so she can be out of her own way so she can just make this happen. And I got on to the internet and I went, hmm, okay, okay. Oh, ooh, I really like that truck. Called up, went down, drove home that night with that brand new truck. Nice. So that's a prime example of the intuition, the spiritual of allowing that to come to yourself. So in that sense, it was a truck. Okay. It was a physical manifestation of a truck. And I'm finally, finally, um, seven years later in a vehicle, I love and adore. And I can see, I like being able to see above <laughs> the cars. <laughs> yeah. So it's the same thing with your intuition though. And, and, and it's allowing that ego to get out of that way because the ego moment was, I don't want to pay that much for a, a payment for a truck. I, I used to once upon a time, I earned that support that suburban free and clear. I don't want a payment. Then I got over it. We went and got the truck. <laughs> there you go. And, and that's the example I'm using is, is it's, it's, uh, the same thing can be with your writing. Um, I do know that I have worked with publishers in the past that are just amazing. You being one of them. Um, yeah, they're amazing you. to work with. They see your talent. They know that you're kind of, you're a quirky individual, but they love you for that. 
And I've worked with publishers that do not like that. They want to put you in the box, and this is the way that you go. And I'll tell you what, I, I, my spiritual side was kicking and screaming the entire time because it wasn't, a, it, it, it didn't feel right. It felt really sickening. I was anxious the whole time. I was frustrated the whole time. Um, and honest, yeah, it's a published story. And I still look at that story and shake my head and go, you would never, ever know that I wrote that story. And I should have went with my instinct and said, nope, and pulled it and not been part of it. But my ego became very anxious and wanted to be part of it so badly that it couldn't see that it was actually more damaging to continue okay. than it would have been to say, nope, I'm empowered. You can't do this to me. Bye. Um, and that's, that's, that's that, that, that having that worth, knowing the empowerment, knowing the power that you bring and allowing your spiritual side uh, to bring forth that power. That's also super, super important. Um, the difference between what's ego and what's, your higher self, your spirit, your soul, from that right. spiritual nuance. Mm -hmm. Oh, Natasha, we could talk forever and ever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have. We've lost hours before, but I can't do that with the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where can people find you on the internet? What is your What is your website? Where can they find you? So you can find me at MagicalBlessingsHealingCenter.com. You can find that's the website. If you're a social media individual, they're at same handle, you know, Magical Blessing Healing Center for Instagram and Facebook. But in Twitter, it's Magical Blessings because, you know, Twitter has it shorter. Right. And those are those kind of, you know, the spaces that you can find me in. And, you know, come, come join us. Uh, we definitely have a fun unique quirky time and uh, the more the merrier is what i always say well yeah hello <laughs> <laughs> oh natasha it's so good to talk to you again i am i am so fortunate to have you as a friend and i thank you for for joining me here in the pen to paper press podcast virtual studio <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me. It's always fun. You never know what we're going to get up to. And this is, it's just so enjoyable. And I really hope that all of your your, your, your podcast listeners uh, get a, a, a chuckle, a soul giggle, a happy cartwheel, quirky moment, and have a lot of fun uh, with, with it all. I truly, uh, I can't wait to see what, what you come up with next because you have that creative mind and uh, yeah, it'll be good, I'm sure. So thank you. Thank you. Before we end our time together, I'd like to say thank you for joining. Be sure to subscribe to the Pen to Paper Press podcast, share it, and leave a comment on our show notes at pentapaperpress.com. Take care and until next time, know that your words have power and your story matters. Bye for now.